Oh, good afternoon, guys. It's uh, just a driver here, Axpat Philippines. If this is your first time on the channel. Please uh, click the subscribe button. I I'd love to talk to you more so we can share more stories and have a good time. And always leave comments, they're fun. So, yeah, I'm, uh, the title of this video is well, I don't know the title yet, but it's to the effect of sort of advice for Axpats in the Philippines and other countries. Now, some people don't know what is an expat. Well, it's short for expatria. I think. It's basically like somebody living in, in a foreign country for different reasons. So, for instance, like an American living in Mexico would be known as a, an American expat in Mexico. Or somebody like me who stays in the Philippines would be like an expat in the Philippines. Uh, why do they do it? They do it for different reasons. Some uh, are students, some work. Their work ends up somehow putting them in different countries. And uh, some people are eccentrics and they've just always wanted to live like on a foreign place or a tropical island or something. And then they can also be romantics, you know, they're, they're in love or they're looking for love or looking for a wife. And I guess sort of like me, it's like I kind of I guess I fell on the latter two categories of maybe eccentric and romantic. And then there's also some that are uh, criminals, and <laughs> I guess they, they end up there for reasons that are not so good, such as like, unfortunately, uh, sex tourism, which is just really an ugly thing. And, you know, if you're like some kind of just, you know, sex obsessed tourist guy, like don't please don't go to the Philippines, okay? Uh, or, I mean, if you, if you have to, like, stick to, like, Manila and, like, just stay in your sleazy bars with your prostitutes. Like, don't don't come to the provinces, please. We don't want you there. Uh, so, yeah. But, yeah, there's also other people that go to these countries. Like, you have, like, missionaries and uh, humanitarians. So there's, like, there's, there's a whole grab of people there, you know, and... There's a lot of, uh, a lot of stereotypes, I would guess, to, like, expats. Some, some Americans assume, or some others assume that, like, you know, maybe a Caucasian guy like me living in the Philippines or something, like, there's, maybe they failed in their own culture, or, like, uh, <laughs> they don't date women from their own culture, so they go to, like, some poor country or something like this. And that's not, that's not the case. I, I, maybe that's the case in some percentage of cases, but like I said, some people are genuinely interested and respect other cultures and places. Uh, you know, like for me, it's like I lived, I've been to every state except Alaska. I've traveled extensively through many states. I've lived in California a long time. I've lived in Texas for a number of years. And I lived in Maine for a number of years. So you just kind of get to a point where I, I for me as like someone who enjoys traveling is like, you know, you got to kind of want to try something else, I guess. Yeah, so I ended up kind of in the Philippines and I've been to other countries. But where was I going with this video? I had a purpose to this. Yeah, like advice for expats or people that want to pursue that. You know, a lot of it is just like common sense. I think there's a lot of fear uh, for American culture in general to travel. A lot of that gets perpetuated, I would I would guess, by news. Because when you think about the nature of news, it's usually negative, right? Like you never hear like good news, so to speak. You do sometimes, but it's usually negative cases that get reported and perpetuated and repeated over and over and over and over again on the news cycles, so to speak. And so with countries like Philippines, for instance, there is a lot of negativity in the way Westerners, I, I think, would generally view it. I mean, what's the first thing that comes to mind? I guess probably be poverty. And then some people think like, you know, all the women are prostitutes and gold diggers that are looking for foreigners but again that's really not the case at all I would say sometimes it is but there's always pockets of people like that in any population but I mean 
most Filipino culture is really, really good, home, uh, family-oriented, as they say, type of people. Especially in the provinces, like, you know, in the, in the big cities, like, you're going to get pockets of stuff like that, of course. But, uh, yeah, and there's, there's different reasons why that stuff happens, too, you know, I mean... Like I said, there's different types of foreigners that go to these places, I mean, and for different reasons. And I'll get more specific and into different things in different videos, but I just kind of wanted to give a broad overview of that, of what it means to be an expat, because some people that I've known, for instance, have asked me, um, um, yeah, actually, a few people at work asked me, because they saw the channel and they, they asked me if like if I was a trader because I was an expat because I lived like it or went to another country or something but that's that's not the case at all like I, me personally I don't I'm not anti-American I think America is a great country a great culture it's got its issues and criticisms which you can talk about that in other videos but it doesn't mean one is anti-American simply because they live or go to another country at all I mean Plenty of Europeans or expats that go to different countries and so forth. I mean, the thing with like Americans and traveling is the, the money in the work, right? Because we're a very industrial country, and to live here and survive in the middle class, you got to work really, really hard, and you got to mostly, usually, work all year. And so people don't have time to travel, but also they don't have the money to do it because they're paying interest on their houses and cars, right? So. You know, we got to make, we got to be realistic how we live, folks. But the thing about truck driving is it, it can give a unique opportunity for people who have that desire to live such a life, okay? So if you can kind of be the type of person to be able to stay on a truck and not have to, like, uh, live, like, in a bed or a house or something... If you can shower at gyms and uh, wash your clothes in the shower and sort of like, uh, you know, hand dry them or hand wash them, excuse me, that sort of thing, you know, it could be for you. Um, where was I going with that? I was going somewhere with that. Oh, yeah, the unique opportunity for truck drivers, yeah. For, for like the overseas drivers at these companies, like guys that stay out three to four months, five, six, seven months, eight months, nine months at a time, they can be really profitable for the companies they work for because they don't have to be like an X location of the country like uh, Texas or Florida or California, Colorado or something that may not be the most profitable place to get a driver every couple weeks, every two to three weeks, right? So that driver can stay on the road and logistically they're able to put them on more profitable roads because the dispatcher doesn't have to worry like, you know, I got to get Ted home for his daughter's recital in Colorado in nine days, so I can't send him on this location. I got to send him to this place. So, yeah. But it's hard, man. It's hard to stay on the truck for like... 13 weeks, 18 weeks, 20 weeks at a time. You gotta be really disciplined. And that's, you know, I'm a big advocate of exercise and diet. Although my diet on this tour hasn't been so good. Kind of been getting into like the uh, meditation thing more. I'm trying not to rely so much strictly on exercising to uh, cope or to, to, to live, so to speak. Because the way I figure it, like when I'm 60, 70 years old, I'm not going to be getting these like massive pumps, you know what I mean? Like my 19 inch biceps won't be soaring at that time. I, I didn't have to say that otherwise. So. I don't know if they're 19 inches, but they're pretty big. Um, anyway, that's neither here nor there. But yeah, back to like the axe bat thing. So, yeah, guys, like you want to go try out other places like you know do your research and uh, do your best to get with good people I would I would say 
you don't have to go to dating sites. We can do other videos on different specifics of these topics because I don't have time right now. I'm just kind of giving a broad overview. But yeah, you don't have to go on dating sites to find people because sometimes that can be dicey, right? Because you never know who you're getting, really. And you hear those catfish stories, which I do suspect maybe happen occasionally. But uh, if you have time, I mean, just, just go there and meet somebody and just in your travels because they're the type of countries to where you can just meet somebody on the bus at the airport at a restaurant walking down the street I mean I'm serious it happens a lot um, and that's pretty cool you know I mean and if you're a decent person you'll find decent people so like go find the local churches or find out how you can help people there and you know, yeah yeah, there's uh, lovely people in a lot of these countries, so we'll talk more about it in uh, upcoming videos, but that's pretty much all I wanted to say right now about what an expat is. And yeah, we'll, uh, I'll talk to you soon, guys. Please like and subscribe and uh, take care. Thank you for watching if you've watched this long. All right, bye-bye.